So morning all, out with RB, and final test ride before handover. We've already done one on this, it's just a quick one round the block for the customer collects on the day of handover. And I always like to test ride a bike before the customer comes. And then it's back to the garage for a wash down, ACF 50, and then I'm going to mer wax all the panels on it, make it nicely glossy shiny for the customer before he comes to get it. And uh, obviously, I have said personal choice, I am not a lover of BMWs. Just a personal thing. Now obviously this is a slightly different one, it's not got a boxer engine in this, this is the upright engine in this one. And it's not a bad bit of kit, but, personal choice once again, I'm not a big lover of BMWs, it's just, uh, they seem to be a bit of a snobby bike when it, when it comes to actually uh, owning a BM. You tend to find a lot of BMW riders do not give you the nod. And it's just a, it's just an etiquette thing. Oh, yours! I've got a BMW. It's a bit like Audi and uh, BMW owners look down on Ford owners, and you tend to get that with the bikes as well. And I've noticed it a bit. Now I was out Super Sausage on Sunday. Took the uh, the final run on the ZX7R. Yes, she's up for sale. Three four nine five if you want her. But there was a guy there with a GS. And no, I do love the look of the GS, the 1250s. And the GS 1250 happens to be probably the number one most reliable, most economical and uh, most popular touring bike. Simple reason being, it doesn't go wrong. But, when it does go wrong, God help you with all the spares and all the other bits on it. So hence, why I'm not a lover of BMWs. I tend to like cheap parts. Mind the curb, mate. Mind the curb. But, as I say, personal choice. I'm not a huge lover of BMWs. But, these two ride absolutely lovely. Heated grips on it, and uh, all the functions are all great. It's got standard indicators. If you've seen some of the some of the BMWs have got a left hand indicator on the left hand, right hand indicator and then just above the right you've got the cancel button so you're all fingers and thumbs when you're going to indicate and it only takes a knock of the thumb just to and you've got your indicators on especially the way you ride so that was another thing I didn't like about the, uh, the BMW uh, setup on the uh, controls personal choice again now obviously my my GTR <laughs> after riding it for so many days now absolutely love that GTR it is comfortable I've not got no backache and I haven't with this because it's an upright bike I'm not crouched over the tank like I normally am I'm not ending up with that uh, progressive backache that I've been having for the last couple of weeks although Sunday when I did take the ZX7 out I got home and I had cricked my neck being over the bike and obviously I've got, I've got a sore right shoulder this morning I've got a, a pulled muscle in my neck and that was just from riding that ZX now obviously on this because my head's upright I'm not sort of uh, over the tank like I normally am so much better so we're just going to take this one down the dual carriageway and the weather's closing in again it was lovely and sunny about half an hour ago so this one's just a quick run round the block, down the short carriage, right, job done, back to the garage. Final test ride, customers come in, make sure she's all good and give her a wash, wax and clean. But absolutely lovely bike and I do love that big gear speed indicator, or the gear indicator down there, six gear. 24,260 miles on it. It needs some fuel in it, but uh, we tend to only run about five litres or less than that per bike simple reason being if it's been stood a while we don't like the fuel degrading so we tend to uh, run them till the uh, 
fuel light comes on and then just top them up with a couple of litres. And then that way you're not uh, leaving fuel in the tank for absolutely ages. Still got a load of used bikes up for sale. And thanks for all the comments that were on the channel. You may notice, uh, if you happen to look at that Titan with the fuel issues, it has come back again. And yet I did a 20 minute ride, no issues whatsoever, customer took it out, would not play ball with him. But we've sorted it, we found what it was. So part ordered, we're going to try a different part this time. Now with maintenance on bikes, and I am going to bang on about this and I'm going to keep banging on until it, someone actually takes notice. Servicing, maintenance, your regime. It's not just a thing like a car, you just put fuel in it and uh, just keep driving the damn thing all the time. It is up to you to make sure that you maintain your bike. Keep it maintained. That is things like tyre pressures, chain tension if it's got a chain. Making sure that your oil's the correct level. Have you got enough coolant in the bike if it's a water-cooled engine? And just generally keeping the damn thing clean. Coat of ACF 50, give it a wash, give it a clean, give it a coat of ACF 50. A lot of people are, oh my bike rusts like crazy. Well, is it in the garage? No, I leave it outside all the time. Well, anything is going to rot if you leave it exposed to the elements. It's up to you to make sure that you keep it washed, waxed, cleaned, looked after. My ZX sits at home, and that is out in all weathers, but it doesn't rot because it's covered in ACF 50, and it gets washed and cleaned every weekend, even if I don't ride it. Other thing is servicing. Servicing schedule is in your handbook. So stick to your servicing regime, 311 miles at 40 to 45 mile an hour. You're going to go ragging it to 60 in the first 311 miles, that engine is not going to last. You're going to get issues, you're going to have problems. Get the service done at 311, then you can do 50. That will take you to 932 miles. And then you have your second service. Once you've done that, then obviously you can open the bike up a little bit. Now uh, someone said to me the other day, oh yes, but my Lexmodo Titan that I've got, I can get 69 mile an hour out of it. And I've just done the belt and rollers, it only does 55 now. Well you shouldn't be running it at 69 mile an hour. Average speed of a Titan is around about 55 to 60. If you're pushing it that hard, you are straining the hell out of the engine. And that is the reason why your bike is playing up. Most bikes will get issues if they're absolutely ragged to win an inch of their life. Yes, it's a 125. If you want more speed, go and do an A1, A2 and get yourself a bigger bike. But your average 125, you should be sitting around about 55, 60 mile an hour. It's a 125cc engine. All these people go, oh yes, but my 125, I've got this bike, I've got this bike, I can get 70 out of it or I can get 79 out of my bike. You shouldn't be doing 79. 79 mile an hour is above your speed limit, especially in the nationals. And obviously single carriageways and B roads, you shouldn't be doing no more than 60. So it's all down to how you ride a bike. And obviously I, I tend to ride bikes well within their limits, even customer bikes. My own bike, yes. I do tend to sort of push it a little bit. Where are we going? Doing 15 mile an hour. Someone's going to get a rev bomb in a minute. And it just shows you since lockdown, people are just not paying attention to where they're going. Oh, we are getting an indicator now. Thank you very much. Red bomb. Absolutely no idea. All the gear and no idea, as they say. 
So ride test over, bike ride's lovely, back to the garage, weather's closing in, it's going to chuck it down. I've got one more bike to ride, yeah, I've got a feeling I am going to get a little bit wet. The bike ride's absolutely fine. So ride test over, I'm heading back for a cup of coffee and a smoke break before we get too more, many more idiot car drivers on the road. Little stalk on the side of the steering wheel. Push it up or down, it's called an indicator. So, till the next one guys. If you're out there riding, be well, ride safe. And from RB, it's a big goodbye from me. Thank you.